what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will start discussing on the conjunctions of planets what happens when more than one planet is sitting in a particular house in anybody's horoscope welcome back again to exotic astrology again and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you know somebody who is interested in seeing my videos you can forward it to them and if you like this video then always watch my other videos and especially the bhagavad gita series on spirituality which i have recently started there you will know what actually spirituality is all right before beginning as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him now let us start discussing on conjunctions what is conjunction basically conjunction basically means that a particular planet is been heavily influenced by another planet if it is sitting with another planet and it also means the house where the two or three or four or five planets are sitting that is influenced by more than one planet for example if sun and saturn are sitting together in the second house in anybody's horoscope in any zodiac sign then whenever it comes to matters related to money or wealth finances family etc both sun and saturn will have a say all right that's the first thing we need to know now how many planetary conjunctions can be there at max you can have how many count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 planetary conjunctions because rahu ketu will always be seven houses apart yes rahu ketu cannot be conjunct they are conjunct in other divisional charts which i will discuss later and why because rahu ketu are always seven houses apart so either you can have rahu on a particular house and then ketu will be exactly seven houses apart and then all the remaining planets the remaining seven planets can be with either rahu or with ketu yes they cannot uh, include both rahu ketu in that so at max you can have eight planetary conjunctions so all the uh, seven planets except rahu ketu will would be either sitting with rahu or with ketu now what is actually conjunction and what are different types of conjunctions <laughs> we can have different kinds of conjunctions for example two planetary conjunction three planetary conjunction and how to know how the conjunction is working which planet will have the say because it is not that if two planets are conjunct or three planets are conjunct everybody will have their equal say it is not like that well there are different rules there are different variations to this some people say that the planet which has the least degree that has the say over the conjunction well that is true there is no doubt about it but what i have seen in my experiences not that this is not correct but there is something more accurate than seeing which has the planet which planet has the less or which has more degree what i have seen in my experience that the planet which is most strongest among the two in that particular sign that planet has the say should i repeat <laughs> the planet suppose there are two planets which are conjunct in a particular zodiac sign then the planet which is more stronger or more comfortable among the two within that zodiac sign that planet has the say for example when sun and saturn are sitting together in any horoscope in any house in any zodiac sign then how do you know which of the two will be more strong or whose effects will drive the other person you check where which zodiac signs does sun perform very good and which are the zodiac signs where sun collapses and the same you do for saturn for example sun is very strong in fire signs yes sun is very strong in the sign of Aries where it is exalted Leo is his own sign and Sagittarius is his friend sign therefore sun is extremely strong in these three signs so 
if sun and saturn are sitting together in any house in any horoscope in fire signs then you definitely know that the traits of sun will be dominant in that house okay there is no doubt about it similarly the opposite is true for saturn saturn gets exalted in libra and aquarius is his mool trikon sign if you do not know what is exaltation and mool trikon then check out the other videos in the playlist you will find what is exaltation what is mool trikon exaltation is basically that zodiac sign where the planet is at its highest level of fulfillment the ultimate purpose of the planet which is achieved in the sign of exaltation that's what is the meaning of exaltation as in sanskrit it is known as uchcha now saturn gets exalted in libra as i said so for example that means for saturn air signs are very comfortable and its own sign is capricorn that means if sun and saturn are sitting together in any house in anybody's horoscope in either air or earth signs then you know saturn will have more say in the conjunction because none of the art signs are ruled by sun or friends of the sun who are the friends of sun mars jupiter and moon and who are friends of saturn venus and mercury therefore you have to know where the planet performs how and what about the other planet accordingly the results will vary for example what is the meaning of a conjunction exactly conjunction basically means that suppose this is the room where i am sitting you are see seeing me i am sitting here making this video and suppose i am not, now i am making this video very easily i am making without any difficulty that means i am sitting alone here i am fully comfortable here provided this is the place is not damaged or provided this is not my enemy's house <laughs> so then what happens suddenly suppose a girl knocks at the door yes and then she comes inside so if suppose she is my wife suppose i am not married but suppose she is my wife and i have a very good relationship with her we are not enemies <laughs> husband wife enemies <laughs> then what will happen is she will support my agenda yes probably she will or she support supposed to at least that means if the sign is comfortable for both the planets let me give you an example if jupiter venus are conjunct in the sign of pisces that is the most fabulous yoga you can have because jupiter has pisces as its own sign and venus has pisces as its exaltation which is phenomenally powerful it is better than having jupiter venus conjunct in cancer because in cancer jupiter is exalted but venus is in a enemy sign it is not very great to have venus in cancer it's not bad but it's not that great similarly if you have jupiter venus in the sign of sagittarius although sagittarius is the mool trikon sign of jupiter but venus is not very comfortable there because venus doesn't like rules regulations of spirituality it only wants to gain the ultimate fulfillment somehow but it has to go through sagittarius and that's the way but it still doesn't like sagittarius that much the way it likes pisces that means venus jupiter conjunction in the sign of pisces is the best thing for both jupiter and venus if you consider as a conjunction jupiter may be happier in cancer than in pisces because pisces is not its exaltation but when you talk of the conjunction the conjunction will play out in a much better way if they are sitting in the sign of pisces because pisces among the three pisces cancer and sagittarius pisces is the only sign where both of them are very comfortable in the other two cancer and sagittarius venus is not comfortable similarly you take the case of venus for example jupiter venus is conjunct with signs in capricorn what happens in capricorn jupiter gets debilitated there yes and venus is in a neutral state there it is not very sad it's not very happy also because 
it likes the sign of Capricorn because it is the sign ruled by Saturn, who who is his best friend. But it's not a very rosy sign for Venus because Capricorn signifies responsibility, duty, war, commitment, structure, all these things. Now, that is a difficult situation for both of them. Now, what if Jupiter Venus is sitting in the sign of Libra? Then Venus will be in its mool tricorn. Yes. But for Jupiter, Libra is not a very great sign because Libra is the sign of mundane indulgence, sexuality. <laughs> and if you put the planet of spirituality there, it is like you have told a sage that, oh, go and see you know, what is going on in this world. Just go and see. Just go and uh, find a girl to get married. So it's like Jupiter feels, oh my God, what's going on here? So, and Jupiter also represents expansion of the person. So, when Jupiter is placed in Libra, the expansion of Venusian traits is very high. But that defeats the purpose of Jupiter. Because Jupiter is to take you beyond this material realm of Venus. So there, if Jupiter Venus is conjunct in the sign of Libra, Venus will have more say. Do you understand now? Because Jupiter is by default very weak there. When I say weak, it does not mean that Jupiter is not functioning. It simply means that, see, let me tell you, conjunction is like, for example, imagine this room, Jupiter and Venus are sitting together. Okay. This is a very powerful place. Suppose this is the place of Libra, which is what marketplace, people talking about mundane things, people talking of how to do deals, negotiations, money, people talking of marriages. Okay. Then what happens? Jupiter is the sage. He's coming and sitting here and he's feeling, my God, what is going on here? Now? Where is my, where is the knowledge of Gita here? Where is the knowledge of Bhagavatam? Where is the knowledge of the Quran here? I don't find it in this marketplace. Everybody is just talking about money and women. Yes, because Libra is all about women. The seventh house originally. And now imagine the predicament of Jupiter. Suppose Venus also comes here. <laughs> Because when Venus also comes here, then what will happen? It will, the planet Venus gets along with the sign of Libra very well because it is his Moltricorn sign. Then Jupiter will feel as if whatever hope was there, that is also gone. <laughs> because now he will be forced to be influenced by Venus. Do you understand? People always say that conjunction of benefits is good. That is not true. If you think that way, well, you are going to do some blunders, definitely in astrology. It is good in a particular way. I will tell you how. But that doesn't mean that is good for the individual on an ultimate sense. For example, there is a lot of hype for this conjunction, Jupiter-Venus. That this is a very great combination. This is the perhaps the best combination any person can have. That is true only if Jupiter is stronger in that zodiac sign. If, it, if it's the other way around... This can be the worst conjunction to have. For example, if Jupiter Venus is placed either in Cancer, Sagittarius or Pisces, then this is the best conjunction to have. Or it is placed in any other water or fiery sign because Jupiter is strong in water or fire. Then then, then in that Jupiter has more say over, your, uh, over the conjunction, which means that for spirituality that is perfect. But if the same conjunction is happening in an art sign or in an air sign where Venus is more strong, that is very difficult for spirituality because then the person overindulges in matters of Venus, which is what love, romance, sexuality and v Jupiter is expansion. So Jupiter will expand the traits. You understand? Then that makes you more and more illusioned in the mundane materialistic affairs. So be careful when you see a Jupiter-Venus conjunction. Do not just blindly go and say that this is good. Well, definitely that makes the person a bit sweet natured. Either that is happening in any sign, either it is in a art sign or it is in a fire sign or water sign or whichever sign it is, but it makes the person a bit uh, sweet. It makes the person a bit good, <laughs> but we have to see, is it benefiting the person in the ultimate sense? And similarly, take the example of Sun Venus. It is like Sun and Saturn because Venus and uh, Saturn are very much uh, similar in that case. For example, suppose Sun-Venus is sitting together in any chart. 
Now what happens is, suppose this conjunction is happening in the sign of Libra. Basically, how how do you see Sun Venus conjunction? Sun Venus conjunction is very simple. Sun is the person, the self, the ego. Ego means not the ego which says I will kill everybody, I will rule this world. No, it is the healthy sense of uh, chitta, the atma. Sun is the significator of atma. Atma means that which you identify with. So, for example, I am a student, I am a husband, I am a wife. That is the ego identification. Arrogance is different. That is more of Sun Rahu kind of combination. But suppose now Sun is sitting here alone. Forget about the zodiac sign. Suppose Sun Sun is sitting. That means the ego is very satisfied alone. That means if Sun is sitting in anybody's horoscope without any conjunction, means no planet is sitting with Sun, then whatever the person wants, he or she will do it, irrespective of what other people say. But suppose here sun is sitting with mercury which often happens because sun mercury and sun venus can only be three houses apart either three houses this side or three houses that side then what happens the friend of the native if it is sun mercury conjunction imagine suppose sun is sitting here and mercury comes and sun says that oh actually i think now i should start practicing uh, spirituality maybe i should start doing some meditation for example, then Mercury is who? Mercury is the friend. Yes, friends or enemies in disguise, however you call it in this material realm. So then what happens? Mercury is the friend. So now sun is sitting with Mercury. That means whatever this person does, he will always be influenced by his friends. Do you get it? Whatever the person wants to do, he or she will always seek validation from friends same is with sun venus for example sun venus suppose sun is sitting here and sun says oh i want to go to this spiritual retreat to this satsang to this program but now venus is sitting there so suppose tomorrow suddenly his girlfriend <laughs> which is venus girlfriend because they are sitting together right so it's acting like a male female relationship if you see that way venus is women or Venus represents the wife. Suppose the wife tells the person that, no, why are you going here? Now let's go to Paris. Let's go to France. Let's go to Belgium. Let's go to Brussels. Then this person will be like, man, I want to go there. But then she is telling like this. I don't want to displease her, you know. So maybe better to go to Brussels. Huh? That, that will be better, I guess. Maybe better is to go to Paris than to go to this spiritual uh, so-called retreat. Now, what will I get there anyways after all? But yeah, if I go to France, I will see the Eiffel Tower, man. Yes, I can also waste some time there. <laughs> and this can happen for a female also. For example, if in a female's chart, Sun and Venus are sitting together, then whatever she does, she will always be seeking validation from the opposite sex. And same is with the men. If the male has Venus and Sun together, whatever he does, he will always seek validation because Sun Sun represents validation. Validation means the sense of confidence and contentment and the sense of inner being that is the Sun. So when Sun and Venus are sitting together, it means you need the opposite sex. Sun needs Venus to tell itself that yes, 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 you are doing good. So these people need a pat on their back by the opposite sex. Yeah, 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 yes, it's good. These people, whenever Sun Venus conjunction, the moment they will see that, oh, some opposite sex has liked their photo, they'll feel very much validated. And these people are obsessed and desperate for relationships because the Sun is the significator of the self. To feel themselves, they need to be in a relationship any sun venus person blindly you can say this of course check other placements also but in matters of relationships they are very much obsessed they are very needy they are very desperate and almost 30 percent of the people of this world they will have a sun venus conjunction and that is why most of the people are desperate for relationships similar is sun mercury conjunction most of the people cannot stay without friends it is very rare that in any horoscope sun is sitting alone. <laughs> it is very rare. <laughs> so, 
so therefore which is the best planet for sun to sit with yes it is jupiter because jupiter represents spirituality so and another placement which is very good for sun to be with is sun with ketu now people will say oh this is symptom of inferiority complex this that that is true i will go to that later but sun with ketu or jupiter can show tremendous spiritual progress in fact sun and ketu together is known as shiva yoga and sun and jupiter is also very powerful and if jupiter is in a great dignity then that is also known as raj lakshan yoga yoga means addition conjunction basically so there you go this is what basically is the meaning of conjunction and there are different conjunctions and there are different combinations and there are different placements by which different yogas in astrology are known as for example if jupiter and moon are in kendra to each other kendra means if they are sitting in the fourth house seventh house tenth house or together in any house for example if jupiter is in the first house in any horoscope and if moon is in first fourth seventh tenth then this is known as gaja kesri yoga and moon and mars if they are sitting together this is known as lakshmi yoga because this is considered very good for wealth because mars represents moon and mars both represent land property real estate all those things so that is considered very good and sun and saturn if they are linked or they are sitting together that is known as chatra bandhu yoga which means that is a yoga for uh, captivation that is a yoga for getting jailed <laughs> now how to see i will discuss on a bit detail for example if sun and saturn are sitting together in the sign of libra then what happens sun gets debilitated there and saturn gets exalted that means whenever sun and saturn are sitting together in the sign of libra these people will always be focused on others they will always be very uh, they will be very much focused on what others are thinking because libra is the sign of others other people and saturn represents the other people and if you go to the opposite if sun and saturn are sitting in the sign of aries then the person only thinks of himself <laughs> or herself if it is, if it is in a female chart then you have to have this notion you have to have this balance for example sometimes sun is exalted and saturn is also exalted and they will be seven houses apart and they will be aspecting each other that means sun is exalted in aries and saturn is exalted in libra so they are aspecting each other so then what happens in that moment their whole life goes in struggle of should i listen to myself or should i listen to others <laughs> and especially conjunctions are very prominent regard related to the planet sun because sun is always either conjunct with mercury or venus and many times it is conjunct with both both mercury venus and that is why most of the people you will see in this world they either need validation of what they are doing is right or wrong from either the opposite sex or from their friends unless either of the two will appreciate them they cannot be convinced what they are doing is right what they are doing is wrong that will be in any area of life even if they are going for education some if sun is with mercury venus either the opposite sex or their friends have to appreciate them and if sun is sitting alone the king is alone the lion is alone nobody can challenge him or her whatever he is doing or she is doing they will do it even if you like it even if you appreciate them even if you do not appreciate them so this is how you study conjunctions all right and what else can i give example of uh, moon and venus so for example moon venus conjunction this makes a person very sweet because both are very sweet planets and here it depends on which sign it is for example if moon is exalted in taurus and venus is also sitting there then this is fabulous because venus has taurus as its own sign and moon is also exalted there it is like having jupiter venus in the sign of pisces so there this yoga will fructify in a very good way the person will be extremely sweet his speech will be very sweet especially his speech and his mind 
will be relatively stable than other people that doesn't mean every anybody who has moon in the sign of taurus will have a very stable mind that is not true the whole horoscope has to be studied but if you take moon alone his mental fluctuations will be relatively less than other people relatively that doesn't mean it will not be there okay and if this combination is in a fire sign then the result will be different the person will be very much headstrong and the person will uh, pursue his or her interests very aggressively if moon venus is in a fire sign and if it's in a earth sign the person will be very much money oriented because especially earth signs deal with money artha yes then this con conjunction's nature will be different and if this is in a water sign it will be different for example if moon Ve moon venus are sitting in the sign of scorpio this can be perhaps the most deadliest the most dangerous conjunction anybody can have unless a benefic like jupiter is aspecting it unless or it is sitting with it because in venus in case of scorpio moon gets debilitated and venus is also having scorpio as the enemy sign and scorpio is by nature a turbulent sign there's a lot of poison in it the scorpion's tail behind so that is a very difficult conjunction the person moon venus in any sign or especially in scorpio the person gets too much obsessed about relationships his definition of what is happy in this world of what is happiness or what is good and bad everything comes from relationships if moon and venus are together because moon is is the manas by which you perceive this world moon is basically the way by which the consciousness is expressed consciousness is the pure soul the chitta the atma that is expressed in this world through the mind the mind perceives okay this is good this is bad yes and then if venus is with moon then moon feels that okay everything that i see has to be interpreted as per the nature of venus which means these people can be too much needy and too much desperate for the opposite sex and that is why this yoga is very famous for creating affairs and uh creating uh, relationships which are very short lived because this also affects venus because moon is a very fast moving planet so their interest gets weird of very fast from people today they they will be in love with one girl and tomorrow they will say no 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 now i love this girl <laughs> so there you see that that is how you study conjunctions and especially with rahu ketu this is known as eclipse grahan that means rahu or ketu if they are sitting with any planet they are supposed to uh, eclipse that planet and how how rahu ketu conjunctions play out is rahu is known as see what rahu does basically rahu will reflect the energy of the planet and ketu will receive the energy what rahu ketu does is rahu let me explain rahu first for example if rahu is sitting with venus then what rahu will do is rahu will suck the energy of venus <laughs> because it is actually illusion rahu is illusion that which is not there so then what happens when venus rahu are sitting together then depending on the sign or other placements then what will happen is this person is always in a illusory world in terms of relationships they will always say okay this person is my soulmate <laughs> every 10 days they will find a new soulmate venus rahu every other 10 days they will find a new soulmate every 10 days i have seen every maybe 5 days and everybody they meet they will feel that rahu connection rahu is what past life <laughs> maybe that's true or not that's not my point but they will feel like that because rahu is that illusion rahu says that yes 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 what you are thinking is right you are, you are right you are good you are you are the best you are the most beautiful girl <laughs> however she is looking she will feel like that if venus rahu is there or she can uh, he or she with this conjunction can love people from different cultures different religion different backgrounds venus rahu conjunction yes and the other extreme is with ketu ketu what it does is it will simply suck the energy it will not give it back <laughs> so the venus ketu people they can have extremely extraordinarily high expectations from people this is what i have seen with venus ketu because 
Ketu doesn't let Venus to see what the reality is. Rahu also doesn't allow you, but their dynamics is different. Rahu shows you the cloud. Ketu doesn't show you anything. <laughs> so Venus Ketu people I have seen, they are always searching for the perfect person. And that's also an illusion because that doesn't exist. <laughs> there you go. And any planet with Rahu, especially Rahu, is under construction because Rahu represents those things which we are yet to learn and master and, and achieve. Ketu represents those things which we already have mastered. And that is why the problem with Ketu is there's overconfidence. That is why Ketu is headless. So that's what happens when you are overconfident is you think you know everything. You think you don't need knowledge. But that's completely wrong. That therefore, Venus Rahu or Venus Ketu has these dynamics. And similarly, Jupiter Rahu is famous known as Guru Chandal Yoga. Jupiter Rahu is conjunct in the charts of those people who have cheated some Jupiterian personality in their life, in their past lives, or maybe in this life also. <laughs> cheated means they, for example, suppose you have gone to an astrologer to take a consultation and then you said sir 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 i don't have money na i cannot give you dakshina later when i uh, start earning i'll give you the dakshina and then maybe the astrologer says okay good i will do your consultation now and then whenever you have uh, money you can uh, give me the money and then you take the consultation and you were like bang i'm out from here yes i came to know what will happen in my life and you cheated the astrologer or you said to a Brahmin something and you didn't do it. <laughs> or you insulted some Brahmin or some spiritual personality. And depending on the sign, it will be decided if the curse is very st strong or it is not very strong. Depending on other placements. And similarly, Saturn Rahu is known as uh, Shrapit Yoga in astrology. Shrapit Yoga simply means that there is some terrible curse in that uh, zodiac sign or in that house where this is forming because both are extremely karmic planets. Saturn represents your actions and Rahu represents cheating. So some terrible cheating you have done in that area in your past life because of which you are born. And how will you know where have you cheated? It's very simple. Just see which is the zodiac sign. For example, if Saturn Rahu is conjunct in signs of Venus, which is Taurus and Libra or Taurus, Libra, whichever you want to take it. Then the curse is from a lady, <laughs> some terrible misdeed you have done with the lady, terrible misdeed. This is very serious. Saturn Rahu's placement is very serious in a particular zodiac sign. And depending on the dignity of Venus, you will know what was the level of the curse. For example, if Saturn Rahu is sitting in the sign of Libra, for example, and if suppose Venus is exalted in the sign of Pisces, so she may be a great lady like Sita or Anasuya who has cursed you. There's no escape. <laughs> Suppose Saturn Rahu is conjunct in Sagittarius. That means a Brahmin, a Rishi, somebody related to Jupiter has cursed you. And what if Jupiter is exalted in the sign of Cancer? Then maybe some Brahma Rishi like Narad Muni has cursed you. You cannot escape that. <laughs> or what if Jupiter is in Capricorn? Then that means maybe he will not be a very great sage. Now he'll be somebody just doing certain things, but he will not be very spiritually elevated. There you see, if Saturn, Venus, uh, Saturn Rahu is placed in signs of Virgo or Gemini, then some relative, some uh, friend, some financial scandal which you did in your past life and depending on the dignity of Mercury, it will be decided uh, what level it was. Yes, that is how you study uh, the conjunctions of Saturn and Rahu. And there are other all other combinations saturn and venus together we all know about that what happens and something very important here lastly i will discuss is conjunctions <clears throat> now some people say that see in hindi there in india there's a saying that when there are two apples sitting together and one is spoiled rotten 
it spoils the other one also yes what it means if a malefic planet is sitting with another benefic the benefic does not influence the malefic should i repeat <laughs> for example if saturn venus are sitting together because saturn is a malefic naturally and venus is a benefic by nature so if saturn and venus are sitting together it is like saturn is the good apple and uh, so, sorry venus is like the good apple and saturn is like the spoiled rotten apple so then what happens when you put two together the rotten apple doesn't get cured it doesn't uh, become a good apple in fact the good apple that will rot that will start rotting it will go down that means whenever a benefic and a malefic is sitting together the malefic is not getting any benefit should i repeat the malefic is not getting any benefit the 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 benefic is losing his benefic nature it is degrading for example when saturn venus are sitting together venus is in trouble from that side trouble because there will be sorrow suffering in relationships because saturn represents tears sorrow pain suffering misery all these things you have to undergo in relationships depending on the uh, other placements of the horoscope that's not a blind rule but uh, these things are seen that till the age of 30 these people even if they get married they will have multiple breaks multiple breakups relationships with five people ten people <laughs> and then after some time they become like saturn <laughs> saturn means these people will say oh now it doesn't matter whatever it happens i don't give a damn anyways it didn't work out five times how will it work out the next time even if it works out maybe by god's grace it will work out right so they say that they become very practical in in relationships but practicality doesn't come by itself everybody likes to be in the clouds like when it comes to venus but when saturn venus are sitting together the person sometimes might be forced to follow celibacy also if this is happening in a difficult house especially the sixth house or the twelfth house or eighth house especially the sixth house because that is the house of celibacy you see because saturn also represents the old age where you cannot enjoy physically so those traits can come under venus but that doesn't mean that venus will benefit saturn that cannot happen because the example of the apple is given and similarly if uh, jupiter uh, jupiter is sitting with saturn depending on the sign this can be a very uh, dynamic uh, yoga because jupiter represents your thoughts your abstract notions your ability to know what is right and wrong and saturn represents your ability to do things irrespective of how you think what is right what is wrong so jupiter saturn if this conjunction is happening in a art sign this will make the person very workaholic he will keep working 24 hours because that's how his belief is <laughs> jupiter is belief and if this is happening in a fire sign or water sign this is perhaps the best combination for spirituality even better than jupiter venus jupiter saturn in fire sign or water sign is fabulous it is mind-blowing for spirituality because then the person will not only practice or he will uh, he will have a desire he will also do things he will be very pakka with his meditation every day he will do he will read 10 shlokas from the gita every day that's fabulous for spirituality there you go there are so many conjunctions i can go on and on and on discussing yes and suppose there are three conjunct three planets which are conjunct for example if saturn venus and sun are conjunct in libra well then sun is like okay i am sitting with two of my enemies so better let me give it up uh, because it it is not going to work out anyways for sun because he himself is debilitated in libra and then uh, there are uh, other two planets who are best friends yes and similarly suppose uh, sun mars are sitting together with saturn in the sign of aries <laughs> then saturn is in a difficult state nobody will listen to him now yes and saturn and mars combination this is called sanghars yoga in astrology because these people need to work very hard because saturn represents breaks 
in a car <laughs> and mars represents the accelerator so it is like putting the accelerator and the brake simultaneously at a, at the same time so that causes lot of friction so the person has to struggle very 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 hard in life especially if they are together and also if they are aspecting because mars can aspect saturn with its fourth aspect and saturn can aspect mars back with its 10th aspect for example if mars is in the 10th house and saturn is in the lagna then mars is aspecting saturn with its fourth aspect and saturn is aspecting mars with its 10th aspect for example or these two are sitting together and depending on the sign it will vary for example if saturn mars is sitting in capricorn that's fabulous that's mind blowing the person will be very workaholic and that is good also in these days of kali yuga <laughs> the person will be able to struggle very much he will break through all struggles he will cross over everything because mars is exalted in capricorn and saturn has capricorn as its own sign so there you see both are very strong so this will have a very uh, strong result and and especially it is said the house where saturn and mars are placed you have a lot of hard work which is to be done in that house yes there's a lot of homework to be done all right is there any other combination remaining i will do video on individual conjunctions later but i am just giving an overview and similarly moon and saturn that that is known as vish yoga in astrology because the person always thinks negative it depends on which sign it is if it is an earth sign maybe things can be a bit better that is it i think from my side to the, for today it's almost been 40 minutes very long video there you see <laughs> that is how you study conjunctions just see where among the two which planet is having stronger power in that zodiac sign that will tell you which conjunction is working how and where it is working and the dispositor which is the sign where the conjunction is happening that is also very important that will also have a strong say on the conjunction okay and that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments on individual conjunctions then please wait halt as in marathi you say na thamba <laughs> i will make videos on them individually two conjunctions three conjunctions but that will take time and if you have any specific questions related to individual conjunctions then please wait as i said i will do it do not worry be patient <laughs> let me see how strong your saturn is because saturn represents patience all right if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it below and if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know until next time i wish you that all the conjunctions work well in your chart okay see you bye bye